I don't care. I didn't get to sleep till six in the morning. My roommate Derek picked up four Eurasian airline stewardesses and entertained them all night in his room. Why didn't you tell them to be quiet? They weren't making any noise. That's what kept me awake. It was just the rustle of satin sheets. Satin sheets don't rustle. <laughs> I'm really sick of this, you know? He's an intern. He's on night duties. He's always throwing these wild parties. He's enormously good-looking. Women swarm to him. He sounds terrible. <laughs> Would you like me to have a talk with old Derek? I already did. I told him I am moving out. I'm too old for a roommate. It's one thing in college, even in law school, but we're working attorneys now. I completely agree. Who'd need that kind of a hassle? No privacy. No chance to lead your own life. Exactly. I thought you lived with your parents, Lucy. Well, just temporarily. I mean, I'm going to get my own place, and they have no objection. It's not as if they're forcing me to stay or anything like that. It's just that it works out better financially this way. It's right by the bus, which drops me here at the corner. And, you know, it's actually very private. I have this little door that leads into a yard and everything like that. It's just like having my... What am I being so defensive about? <laughs> yes, I live with my parents, Sarah. <laughs> Well, I don't see anything wrong with living at home. You get the use of the maids, the swimming pool, the tennis court. This is true. <laughs> How about you, Tucker? Have you found a place yet? Oh, Sarah, have I ever found a place. There's a wonderful old building right across the street from the office that's been converted into a co-op. That sounds great, Tucker. Can you afford it? I can, as soon as I find an extra $30,000. <laughs> I'd love to help you out, Tucker, but I'm a little short this week. It's okay. I have a plan. I'm going to ask Mr. Marshall for it. <laughs> oh, Tucker. <laughs> you know, you are so adorable when you haven't had any sleep and you're talking such utter nonsense. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm simply going to ask for an advance against my future salary. I have made my mind up here. Tucker, don't. Mr. Marshall, please. I mean, it's a very sound investment. I'm sure I can convince Mr. Marshall. Yes, Tucker Kerwin. <laughs> One of your associates? <laughs> yes, I, I was wondering if I could have a minute or two of your time to speak to you regarding a personal matter. Thank you, sir. You said no. <laughs> See? <laughs> yes, Mr. Marshall, please. Mr. Marshall? Uh, yes, Tucker Kerman again. I was wondering if I could speak to you regarding a financial matter. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll be right up. Thank you. <laughs> See? You were wrong. <laughs> And they range, sir, from 75,000 all the way up to, oh, 300,000. Those are magnificent, but, but even the small ones are gorgeous, sir. And it's a very sound investment, I think, because it's just going to keep going up in value. That's what they told me about puka shells. <laughs> but, but you know, you know, New York. 
York City real estate, sir. No, I don't. I don't. I live in the country. I live outside New York, Scarsdale. I come in a commute every day. It's awful. Bumper to bumper, nowhere to park. My chauffeur weeps all the way home. Well, the thing is, sir, I just... I, I hate to let an opportunity like this get away. Yes. Well, I mean, you want me to advance you the money or something? Well, I, I, I'd be very grateful, sir. Yes. yes. Do you know how old I was before I had $30,000? How old, sir? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was my birthday. I'd blown out the candles on the cake, and my father gave me the choice of gifts. In one hand, he had a check for 20,000 pounds, a lot of money in those yeah. days. 20,000 pounds. In the other hand, he had the most brutal little teddy bear you've ever seen in your life. Now I had the choice. You see, I'd make a mind, quick, sharp. And uh, I was smart. I accepted the check and asked him how much he wanted for the teddy bear. <laughs> oh, he was a great fellow, my father. I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> Where were we? Where were we? The money, sir, the money. Which, which I could pay you back in four or five years out of my salary. See, the thing is, Mr. Marshall, I've, I've looked at a lot of apartments, but none of them even come close. It, it, it's one of those classic old New York buildings. Oh, no, old is good. It's got so much character, sir. You know, hand-carved moldings, colonial windows, oak floors. How wonderful to be young and want something. So badly. <laughs> to strive for the unattainable is great, you know. There's joy in the struggle. And I somehow feel I wouldn't like to deprive you of that joy by just handing you over the money. And yet, and yet, what to do, what to do. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll need some time to think about it, sir. I, I can't just come in here at a moment's notice and expect you to hand me over $30,000. <laughs> When you've done business in Burma, my boy, you learn always to carry pocket money. <laughs> Goodness, you know, when I was in law school studying late at night, my mind would start to wander sometimes. I, I would picture myself as a successful lawyer, a partner in a great law firm, and I was living in this apartment. This apartment? I swear to you, Tucker, this is the exact kind of apartment I've always wanted to live in. It's just sort of simple and charming, tasteful. What do I have? A sterile, modern, pretentious shell. That's what I get for asking a decorator to capture my personality. <laughs> I don't Why did I slavishly follow the advice of a man wearing harem pants and a t-shirt that said, hurt me? <laughs> well, I... Thanks for dropping by. Oh, gee, this is... Oh, no, no, and you have a pillar. You don't know what I would give for a pillar. Ooh. Elliot, the paint is still kind of fresh and... Uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've got a, uh, a, a client meeting in about a half an hour, Tucker. Do you have anywhere I can wash in up? In there, you great. <laughs> this is... <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if this is going to work out, Johnny. I, I don't know if it's great me living across from the office like this. I mean, I've, I've always had this thing about privacy, you know? Hey, I can respect that. You know, that's why I like hanging out with you, Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> You want to run? Hello, oh. there you are, there you are. Mr. Marshall. Settled in there, settled in there. Well, almost. Well, this is it. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Yes. Not as nice as mine. <laughs> Yours? Yes. All that commuting. Good heavens, I've given that up. I've brought the penthouse upstairs. Ha-ha, <laughs> we'll have some fun. <laughs> We're neighbors. We're neighbors. That's great. Yes. Tucker, I can't get this. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Marshall, I have paint on my face. <laughs> no need to apologize. That's just the shade I need in my bathroom. Come along with me. I'll, I'll, I'll use you as a color chip. <laughs> oh. Yes, it 
Ought I to knock or ring the bell or something? Yeah. As we're neighbors, you don't mind my dropping in, do you? Well, sir. If you're smart. Don't mind a bit. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I came for. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to come to your housewarming tonight. Oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Yeah, well, you know how to believe this when I've got a blind date. Yeah. <laughs> Will you believe that? Now, careful how you answer. Oh. How, did, how, how did you come to have a blind oh, date? Oh, you sir? may well have. I don't know, some old woman, a friend of a friend, or a client of a client, or something, I don't know. Isn't it awful, old woman, but just my luck. I suppose somebody's got to take these old people out. <laughs> well, you're welcome to bring her back to the house for me, you know, sir. Bring her back to your place? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'll take her somewhere quiet, give her a little dinner. We'll have a nice quiet chat about mutual friends who are dead. <laughs> it's not an evening. Yeah, well, excuse me, sir. One second. Huh. Hi! <laughs> Come on, it coats over there, presents here. Oh. <laughs> well, Oh. This is it. What do you think? It's so it's big. big. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Marshall. Hello, nice hello. to see you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I've got to go, unfortunately. Nice to see you. I, uh, I wish I could stop. It's got the appearance of being a joyful evening. Oh, Hi. oh wrong again. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, my God, my God. It nice. just keeps getting better and better. Could <laughs> you get the door, Ellie? Sure. Hello? Speaking? Oh, my God. I don't believe it. How are you? God, it's been so... You're not married, are you? Well, Darcy, what are you doing in New York? <laughs> Yes, well, why don't you come over now? Yeah, now is great. No, I, I would love to see you alone. No, not at all. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> well, do you have the address? Uh-huh. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I own this little co-op. <laughs> okay, great. Fantastic. Well, you, okay, you definitely... Okay. Uh, you're like ten minutes away. Okay, yeah, just... Okay, fantastic. Definitely you're coming. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Call for an old friend, sir. Well, it was this girl that I, w I was crazy about in college, but she went out with my best friend. So I, I, I could never ask her out. And now my best friend is married. She's in New York for five hours between planes, and she says that we have unfinished business. Oh. <laughs> Boy, we, we've unstarted business. <laughs> Jeez, well, then I guess in a few minutes your dream girl is going to be... Sitting right here, hmm? <laughs> wow. Well, look, I, I guess I'll just get out of your way. <laughs> Thank you, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding, sucker. <laughs> God, you haven't changed. You're still gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Come on in. Well, I guess the stories were true. I heard you done well in New York. Not till tonight. <laughs> I uh, suppose you're wondering why I'm here. Well, I, I've been wondering a lot why you weren't. <laughs> it's nice to be wanted. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sit down, sit, uh, sit down. I, nice. Tell me about what's going on. Why are you only here for five hours? That? Well, I got a job as an aide in the American Embassy in Chad, Africa. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> National Geographic. Oh. <laughs> I'm sick already and I haven't even gone yet. Somehow every moment I have left in this country seems so precious. <sighs> oh, Darcy. Would you like me to put on some music? Oh, if you want. I don't need music. I'm having a great time. It's so good to see you. It is unbelievable to see you. <laughs> you 
looks as if you've been having a better time than I had. Awful taste I had. Horrible. I've come here for help. <laughs> but, sir, you're alone. I'm not really alone. I told her the lift was out of order and she's crawling up the stairs. <laughs> so I sprinted up two steps at a time to warn you. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Thought if she told me about her operation one more time, I'd go mad. Oh, she's had gallstones, gallbladder, bile, duct, anything. You name it, she's had it. Good heavens. Perhaps she's exhausted herself by this time. <laughs> Uh, oh. I'm sorry I couldn't keep up. I just had an operation. <laughs> Tucker, Kerwin, this is Edith Tally. Oh. Edith Medicare Tally. I, I have to walk slowly. My stitches could break open in a flash. Oh, she's fine, isn't she? Thank you very much. I wish you introduce me, will you, please? Oh, uh, to this friend of yours, before I lose faith in the whole sex. Uh, Darcy Mason, this is the senior partner of my yeah. firm, Emerson Hello. Marshall. Oh, How do you you're do? lovely, my dear. But, oh, <laughs> but you look just like the nurse who helped pull the drain out. <laughs> she does. Uh, Mr. Marshall, the last thing I would want to be is inhospitable, but you see, Darcy only has five hours. Well, let's make the most of them. <laughs> I was on my way to Cincinnati when I got these incredible cramps. <laughs> Do you know how I could describe the pain? Interminably. <laughs> when you have major surgery and they've removed... You know how many gallstones? I do, 93. <laughs> There's a story about each one of them. Exactly. <laughs> now. Oh, no. Now, this one, this one was the first one that the surgeon removed. And, and when he... Well, here, take it, dear, and look at it. There. One maybe could have been the major source of pain. Um. I call it little nasty. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me, my dear. I've taken a lot this evening. Don't start naming all those little things. Eighty-nine, ninety, ninety-one, ninety-two. Ni I'm missing a gallstone. Uh. Oh, lock the door. Nobody move. <laughs> It's, it's, it's probably just falling on the floor. What's the matter? It's nothing. It's just I, I was eating peanuts and passing gallstones. Or was I <laughs> passing peanuts and eating gallstones? Well, you did pass me a peanut. Well, let's hope you pass a gallstone. <laughs> oh no! Look at the time, Mr. Marshall, Miss Tally. It's been fascinating, but I've got to catch that plane. What are you going? My plane leaves in an hour. <laughs> You don't have to go now. I must be totally in all. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Do you mind if I borrow this magazine? Not at all, sir. Yeah. Poor boy. You, you've been wishing you'd been in bed hours ago. <laughs> yes, you, yeah. sir. Well, good luck. Good luck. God bless you. Tucker, I've got to go, too. But it's been so good seeing but, you. Oh, well, listen, i got to catch my plane. But just... Take care. Stop hiding from me. Darcy! I have to find you. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Now, where, where are you? I'm just not going to leave here without you. Oh, my stitches. Oh. Nice seeing you again. Oh. Where are you, you naughty little girl? Here she is. Great. Excuse me, sir. Oh, come in. I want to thank you for your hospitality last night, my boy. You're very welcome, sir, but that's what I want to talk to you about. I'm afraid what I'm about to say might displease you. Well, I take a chance, then. <laughs> I must. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> Sir, please.
try to understand that the pressure on a new associate with this firm is tremendous. It's too grueling for him not to be able to relax at his own home, on his own time, and lead his own personal life. And I just can't do that, Mr. Marshall. I can't knowing that my employer may drop in on me at any moment. Good heavens. Do you know what I think you've done? You've what? hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure about that. It's a long time since anybody hurt my feelings, but I think you have. Well, never mind. But if you don't want me in your home, all right, then I won't come into your home. I mean, I've got a lot of friends. They're mostly dead now, but I've had a lot of friends. <laughs> uh, I'm quite capable of managing by myself. I mean, you know, I'm not a lonely old man searching for companionship, but not bloody likely. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, you've made your point, so you can go. Mr. Marshall, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry if I offended you. Very sorry. Mr. Marshall? I said you can go. I can't. I, I can't just go like this. First you hurt my feelings, then you disobey me. Mr. Marshall, <laughs> please try to understand. I, I think it's wonderful that you're my neighbor, but you're also my boss. And because you're my boss, I, I can't talk to you like I could any other neighbor. I mean, the truth is, sir, I'm, I'm privileged to know you. You're probably the most interesting man I've ever met, but I, I can't tell you that because you're my boss. I think we can make an exception in this case. <laughs> well, well, you are, sir. You're, you're one of the most fascinating, charming, witty... Yes, there is such a thing as spreading the jam a little bit too thick. <laughs> and if you weren't my boss, sir, I, I could also tell you that no matter how good company you are, there are going to be those very rare moments, like last night, when I would rather be left alone. However, tonight, if, if you would like to drop in and spend some time, I'd, I'd be delighted. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't, you know. Someone I haven't seen for a long time, someone very charming, very dear to me, is coming to dinner with me. What a pity. Oh, that's fine, sir. M maybe I could, I could drop in on you after she's gone. Good. Breakfast it is. <laughs> you got money. You should be. Coming up, is Eddie Capra's eccentric aunt a target for murder? And does a drug deal in Spain spell trouble for Toma? Vince Baguetta is Eddie Capra, and Tony Mosante is Dave Toma. They're USA's crime busters, and they're next. For your condition, it's called the Wall Street Blues. Yes, those young lawyer blues. Night, Mr. Walters. Mm. 